The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Iturea and Trachonidus, and Lysinus was tetrarch of Abilene, and during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of the Lord came to John, the son of Zechariah, who was living in the wilderness. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path, for every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low. The winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Is we are Christian. That is our name, that is our title, that is our life. And we are called to be just the same. We hear in our readings, the Lord is not ignorant of what we are going through. The Lord is working through our present situations to make us even better. That is why Advent is not a burden. The season of Advent is a privilege. Because God is involved, I am involved, and together we find unity. Amen? We are privileged people in for those who lack the Holy Spirit, the month of December is a burden. Grumble, grumble, grumble. I gotta go here, I gotta cook this, I gotta do that. Can't stand it. Wait for it's over. That's a lack of the Holy Spirit. And these are the people that make us miserable. Heaven forbid we're one of that crowd. Advent is a privilege because we are receiving the Holy Spirit new and fresh. We say, ha this is a month of invitations. Isn't it beautiful to be wanted? Is that a privilege? We receive invitations and people invite us into their house. May God bless you. People are inviting us to their table. People are inviting us to travel with them on a pilgrimage of faith. What a privilege indeed. What's sad for me, it seems lately I've been refusing more invitations than accepting. And that bothers my conscience. But here we are in this manner. For a parish priest, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday are our busiest days. Friday, we try and to fill up what was lacking during the week and prepare for the weekend. The weekend, you're trying to get sleep. And Monday comes, and you try to finish what you started last week and get prepared for what's coming the week ahead. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ is a privilege indeed. On Friday, I was in Holyoke at the soldier's home, offering the sacrament of the sick to our brothers and sisters in uniform who were struggling. And then I went down the road to the Holyoke Hospital, and then back in the car to Springfield, and then at Mercy Hospital, and then from Mercy, go to Bay State. Sometimes the finest conversation in Jesus Christ we find are the ones we least expect. And yes, the parking lot, the stairwell, the dinner table, these are wonderful places to evangelize, not by preaching Jesus, which is too easy, too shallow. It's by living Jesus, which takes guts. Amen? We are in the season of sacraments. Saturday morning, we had a funeral. Then Father Brian had a baptism. And then over an hour of the Sacrament of Reconciliation in English and in Spanish. Then last night, our church was filled with one of the biggest masses of the weekend. And here we are today with a lot in store. But I think in faith, I've already seen the greatest blessing of the weekend. Yesterday, I was in South Hadley by the Holy Dam. I met St. Patrick's Parish. 
we are doing first penance, preparing for first reconciliation. And St. Patrick's is a beautiful parish because it is very small. And yes, people know one another. But St. Patrick's parish is dangerous because there's no secrets. It's so small that you whisper here, everyone's listening to over there. But it's also relaxing the Holy Spirit to be in a family. And sometimes in the family, things don't work out as we expect. The service was going to start at 12 o'clock. Then we decided 1210, then 1215, then 1220. And the pastor kept on trying to gather people in. About 60 children with parents, grandparents, and friends were trying to gather things in. And finally the pastor says, are we all ready to begin? Finally? And a little boy in the front, sitting right next to me, was like this. And the pastor said, are you ready to begin? And he said, no. He said, young man, are you happy? No. Do you need to use the restroom? No. Are you hungry? No. We're one of the priest's room? No. You want to talk about it? No. He said, well, we're not going to start until you're happy. Because we are a spiritual family. What is your problem, young man? And he looked at the priest and he said, I can't talk to my sister. He said, oh, that's serious. What's the problem? I never got my cell phone. Here we are preparing for first penance. And the kid is wound up because he lacks technology. And this is the blessing of Advent. We're not laughing at the kid. The will of children is teaching us the truth. So we're laughing in the Holy Spirit. Advent is not what I am doing. Advent is what I am receiving. Advent is not where I'm going. Advent is who I am going with. Some people say, why is the crash incomplete? Where's Jesus? That's a good question. Because it is us who are called to place Jesus there. Not a store-bought Jesus, but the Jesus here, through us, for everyone to see. We don't come to Mass to look at the light that's dispelling the darkness of this one building. We are personally being invited by the power of Jesus to be the light that dispels the darkness, not of this building, of the entire world. We hear that in the Gospel passage. John is living alone in the desert. And we know to his company. But when the Lord Jesus is involved, one is enough. And in one attitude, we see the desert is creepy because you're alone. You lack family. You lack technology. You lack food. You lack shelter. But the desert is also a privilege because it strips us away from the distractions of people who tell us what we should do to listen to the Lord who's inviting us to what we ought to do. It frees us from the distractions of being over there when I need to go deep within here. The Lord God found John in his spot as he was because John was available. And what does John preach? He doesn't preach himself. He preaches Jesus. Because John found the truth. Oh yeah, he has bizarre hair. Oh yeah, he's wearing ugly clothes. And oh yes, he has a terrible, disgusting diet of bugs and honey. And he is the one that the Lord God chose to transform the entire world. Simply because John was available. John was courageous, and John trusted the one who was leading. Advent really can be that easy if we're willing to cooperate.